Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to introduce to you a very special guest today, Mr. Zach Bonner. There were no members of the press in attendance that day, but I was there and happened to be filming the company meeting when Zach Bonner spoke to Lazy Days for the first time. Without any notes or cue cards, he told us about the 1.3 million homeless children in America and how it was his dream to help bring that number to zero. He drew a standing ovation that day, and he deserved it. After all, he was only nine years old. A few months later, Zach returned to Lazy Days to personally thank the Employee Foundation for loaning his family an RV to help him pursue his dream. This time, there were quite a few members of the media on hand, and what they saw was kind of a big deal. Zach was about to walk from Tampa to the White House to raise awareness for homeless youth. The first steps of his journey to Washington would be taken right here at Lazy Days RV Campground. A large group of supporters from the Employee Foundation were on hand and walked with Zach for the first mile. I was there once again filming the event. There was such hope and optimism. I tried to capture the emotion of the day as the group marched with a pride that comes with being part of something great. When the initial mile ended and the cameras in the crowd went home, I caught a glimpse of Zach as he continued north. I thought to myself, this is a pretty amazing young man, and he's just 10 years old. Two years later, I wrote an article in Better RVing magazine about Zach and his walk to the White House. By then, he had won several awards for his work. He'd been on countless talk shows and even met the president. I thought he'd love telling me stories about all the attention he was getting and all the famous people he'd met along the way. But instead, he just wanted to talk about the fact that there were still homeless children in America. There was more work to do. The following March, Zach was back at Lazy Days to begin another walk for homeless youth. This time, the media came out in full force, and they were treated to quite a show. Flashbulbs popped, and cameramen jockeyed for position to catch a glimpse of 12-year-old Zach as he began his march across America with all of Lazy Days behind him. Once again, when the first mile came to a close and the cameras in the crowd disbanded, Zach marched north. He was still only 12 years old, but his eyes seemed focused on something the rest of us had missed. Seven months later, I caught up with Zach in the Arizona desert. He'd lost about 15 pounds and was a lot tanner than when he left Lazy Days about 2,000 miles earlier. But his eyes still held the same determined focus. My job was to find out how Zach was doing on his journey across America. How many pairs of shoes had he gone through? How was living in the RV? What kind of sunblock did he wear? When I met up with Zach, he was coming down with a cold and didn't want to talk to the camera right away. He just wanted to walk. And so, we walked. So serious. I wondered what he thought about as he trekked across the Valley of the Sun in 100 degree heat. What motivated him? I asked Zach's brother Matt what he thought. He's so advanced maturity wise for his age that um, when you talk to him it's not really like talking to a normal 12 year old you know um, that you can kind of you know have fun with and mess with a little bit. Um, you can't really fool Zach. He's not a normal 12 year old but I guess we all kind of knew that. I mean, how many 12-year-olds have camera crews following them and major newspapers like the New York Times tracking them down for interviews? But I wondered what Zach thought about all the attention he was getting. He would have told me if I asked, but it didn't seem to be the right time. So instead, I asked another member of the Bonner family what Zach thought of the limelight. You know, most people, you know, if they found out the New York Times was flying in to write an article, they'd be like ecstatic. Be like, oh my gosh, you know, this is fantastic. And Zach, you know, to him, it's just, oh, okay. <laughs> That'll work. That'll help raise a lot of awareness. But he doesn't really, you know, think, oh, wow, I'm going to be in the New York Times. It's just, I'll get to tell my story in the New York Times kind of thing for him. And he never watches his news or reads the articles or anything. And I think that's what keeps him, keeps him level-headed. It was the middle of the day, a time when people in this area were warned of the dangers of being outside in the heat. But Zach marched on. We were walking on the side of the road when something caught Zach's attention. He said he wanted to talk, and so I listened. Uh, so as you can see, um, behind me we have a, uh, a, a squat, which is where a homeless person, um, possibly a child, has been sleeping. 
and um, they have made a makeshift door out of like a tabletop um, that will fit uh, their uh, their squat area, which is uh, which is really neat. And they're using drapes and rugs and um, really whatever they can find to um, you know to cover up and to be able to use that uh, to sleep with. So I um, just kind of wanted to show you what what a squat is and um, where they stay at night. And so there you go. Possibly a child. Those words stuck in my head as we moved on. I thought about my life and my job and my family and my problems and how hard it is for me to find balance and peace in my little world and somehow pay the bills at the end of the month. But a child, sleeping in a tunnel under the road, it just didn't seem possible. How could I have not seen this before? Derek Deegan is a proud father and retired cop who protected and served the Valley of the Sun for 20 years. He's dedicated his life to helping homeless kids beat the street, and he explained to me how a child sleeping in a tunnel is not only possible. All over America, it's a tragic reality. Desperate people do desperate things, and young adults who feel like that line with a loving caregiver has been broken, it's almost a break of trust with humanity. People always have an opinion that they ran away from a good home, never realizing that the home is not the same as your home. Their home is a, it is a disaster or it's, it's dysfunctional or they're in the foster care system and have been through an awful lot. The epidemic nationally of human trafficking is terrible. We know over 300, on any given night, over 300 young adults are trafficked in the Maricopa County Valley of the Sun, average age 13. And that's not just unique to the, the Valley of the Sun. This, is, this goes on across our, our, our nation. And so it's something that we need to be more aware of. It's as big an epidemic and worse because the damage that's done to these young adults goes on and on. And they then grow into adulthood. Uh, and, and more often than not, never get the help they need. And the damage can be irreparable. Derek leads a youth development center in Phoenix, Arizona called Tumbleweed. Zach met with several of their leaders to discuss how he could help spread the word about their cause and bring light to the invisible youth of America. Chris Plenty Wounds is one of Tumbleweed's success stories. With Zach's help and support, he sat down with us and explained what it was like to be a homeless youth in America. I hate weekends. I hate weekends so bad because I think you have nothing to eat. I have to wait until the school day so I can get something like for breakfast and for lunch. I was crying. I was I couldn't handle it anymore. I basically sleep on the on the yard with the dog in that dog in the dog house. I was freezing. I was completely freezing the night. I thought I was going to die. We talked for more than an hour. Chris showed tremendous courage in telling us his story of living on the streets. Still, he mentioned that there were parts of his past that he had chosen to forget. I later learned that when he was Zach's age, Chris's brother was brutally murdered. Chris saw the whole thing happen in front of his eyes. Sitting in his apartment, as Chris showed off his newspaper sculptures and listening to him explain a hopeful future that includes attending Arizona State University, I realized why Zach never read the articles about his walk or watched the news stories that covered his quest. I realized that those stories, mine included, never focused on the real reason Zach was walking. I'd been following Zach with a camera and a pen for years, enamored with his maturity and smitten with the idea of a boy and a cause. Like so much of the frenzied media looking for a golden story, I'd lost sight of the cause. The homeless youth of America are invisible, and I, I kept him that way. But I finally understood after meeting Chris and listening to his story. I finally understood after listening to Derek explain the plight of the homeless youth. I finally understood the need to show America the broken souls that live hidden within our country's shadows. And I finally understood what motivated Zach to keep walking. The homeless youth are walking every day and there's no break. They don't go home at the end of the day. They're not going back to their house. They're, they're still walking. And here's a young man walking today across the country and choosing to. Yet for our youth, that's what they do every day. People helping people is what draws awareness. And you're here today because a young man said, I'm gonna walk from sea to shining sea. 
and I can affect the lives of many, many people because of it. I just hope that people who hear the message will see just how much help is needed out there. Zach, I, um, it's about five o'clock in the morning here. Uh, we're near Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, we've walked about 1,900 miles um, since we uh, left Lazy Days. So um, we're making pretty good progress, and we hope to do about 20 more miles today. Um, I'm sorry uh, that uh, I'm not sounding too well, but I'm a little, uh, sick, so I have a really sore throat. But um, I just wanted to say thank you to you all, uh, you know, for, you know, all that you've done for us. Um, you know, not just with the RV, but with the support along the way and, um, you know, helping us out with whatever we need with whatever y'all can help us with. So I just wanted to say thank you. And it takes everybody joining together to really actually make a difference. So from everybody at the Red Wagon Foundation, um, just wanted to say thank you and we'll see you back at Lazy Days.